It's Parsha Skip Tiso, but we will skip to the second Aliyah, the story of the golden calf. Moses is at Mount Sinai, there the story is. And on Mount Sinai, he was there for 40 days. He left the day of Shavuos, morning. I mean, in the afternoon of Shavuos. Early morning, God revealed himself to the Jewish people, said the Ten Commandments, Moses turned to the Jews and he said, I'm going up at Mount Sinai and you wait for me. In 40 days I'll be back. Anybody who has a question should go to Aaron or to who? Who was Miriam's husband? Anybody who has a question should turn to them. Now, what was Mount Sinai? Cloud? Fire? The closest thing you can compare it is maybe to a volcano. Now from a volcano, everybody runs away, right? A few years ago, it was in one in Europe. Oh, Imagine yeah. Moses going inside the volcano. Deeper and deeper, it disappears. It's coming back in 40 days, they say. 40 days passed, and Moses is not coming. They counted the day that Moses left as one of the days. But that was already the afternoon. The day, the day in Judaism ends by the, end, by the evening, by sunset. But Moses said, Moses meant to say, count 40 days from sunset. 40 full days. And they counted this day too. He said, oh, who knows what happened to Moses? Maybe he died. That was the problem. Bad calculation. Now, the problem, the, the, why they said that? Because when you see somebody goes into the volcano, you don't give him many chances to come back 40 days later, you know. He didn't eat, he didn't drink. He went, he disappeared, basically. Now, Moses is at Mount Sinai, having nice conversations with God, learning Torah, learning the written Torah during the day, the oral tradition during the night. At the day he was standing, at night he was sitting. It's a whole discussion, in a separate discussion. Here we are on page, page 5 or 6, Number 18, we are in chapter 31, number 18. Go ahead. And he, Adonai, gave to Moshe, when he finished speaking to him on Mount Sinai, two tablets of the testimony. They were stone tablets written with God's finger. God gave him two stones. The stones were made of? Yeah. Sapphire stone, blue stones, beautiful stones. God provided the stone. God provided the writing. All coming from God. With the Ten Commandments, five on one stone, the two separate stones. And Moses gets a stone. But meanwhile, the Torah starts to tell us what happened downstairs. Okay. When the people saw that Moshe was late, in coming down from the mountain, they gathered against Aaron and said to him, Arise, make us gods that will lead us. For this Moshe, the man who brought us from the land of Egypt, we do not know what happened to him. We do not know what happened to him. Make us a god. Moses died. We will point Aaron to be the leader. Hur is not around. Rashi says, the Talmud says that who they came, who started to stop him from, he says, what do you mean, wait for Moses? They got angry with him, they killed him. That Aaron now knows, Aaron was not afraid that he will be killed. What Aaron says, if, I will, if he will be killed, then there will be no control, nobody will be in control. Though. That he started to try to buy time. He knew that Moses has to show up. It's just a matter of the longest 24 hours. Moses has to come. That they say the men who took us out from Egypt, we don't know what happened to him. Go ahead. Uh, Aaron said to them, Remove the golden rings which are on the ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. All the people removed the golden rings which were on their ears and brought them to Aaron. Okay, Aaron came up with an idea. He says, Go bring the jewelry from your wives. Naturally, Women are not so quick to give the jewelry. Then he said, we'll walk it out, you know, we'll see. What will happen? The women did not give the jewelry, according to the Talmud. The men gave their own jewelry. 
Number three, what happened? Chapter, um, what is this? Theory two, number three, go ahead. You want to continue? Yeah. Oh. All the people removed the golden rings which were on their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took them from their... Well, they brought them to Aaron. Somehow the Jews found gold. No problem to bring gold. They had enough gold and they brought it to Aaron. Now Aaron has the whole boy and a bunch of gold. He took them from their hands and formed it with a goldsmith's engraving tool and made it into a molten calf. They then said, These, Israel, are your gods. Okay. Oh, hold on one second. Okay, okay. <laughs> It certainly makes it look like Aaron is responsible for putting together the golden calf, but yet our tradition lets him off the hook for this. How, how do we explain that? Okay. Aaron, here it's written clear that Aaron made a golden calf. Not only here it's written, Moses tells Aaron, what did Jews did to you that you did it to them, right? The language is, and Moses came and... Um, After he destroyed, the, on page 520, actually chapter 32, number 21, Moshe said to Aaron, What did these people do to you that you brought upon them such a great sin? And Aaron tells them they wanted me to make a god. I said, here, here Aaron, Aaron's story is a little different. Aaron says on page 521, Number 24, it's chapter 32, number 24. He said, I said to them, you want to read it? Who, I said to them, who has gold? They removed their gold and gave it to me. I threw it into the fire and this calf emerged. Aha. Uh -huh. Little Here, revisionist history. Huh? Little revisionist history. Okay. Obviously, there were, there were two versions of what actually happened. If he actually made it, or he just he just throw it into the gold and it made it. No matter what, I mean, if he throw it in the gold, into the fire, he didn't do it. But it's still the idea to take gold and collect gold and throw it into the fire. It's also was him. He was going to turn it into something. We just didn't know exactly. what it was going to be. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The question is, what was Aaron thinking? Then we will see there is a Rashi. Um, yeah, uh, page, now we are, we'll go to page 512 he stopped you in the middle of the verse on page 512 what is, this is the God what you what is up uh, from, from the land of Egypt right? Mm -hmm. when Aaron saw this he built an altar before it Aaron then called out and said tomorrow will be a festival to Adonai okay it sounds pretty much here like... Aaron saw. Aaron saw. What he saw? What, go ahead. Well, from, if, if we interpret this directly, this is the God who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Now, we know that the God who brought us up from Egypt was in the pillar of fire. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, how do you make him even if the God... But that's what the, 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 the people who worship the idols started to say. This is God. What Aaron saw. Let, let's see the Rashi number 5. will give us a little an understanding. Page 512. Rashi number 5, it's chapter 32, number 5, we'll see Aaron saw. What Aaron saw? Aaron saw that it was alive. That it was alive! The thing is moving! <laughs> you take a piece of gold, you throw it in the fire, comes out a golden cave that's moving, that's eating, that's crossing, look as it says, as it is said, of the golden calf. In the form of an ox eating grass. Eating. Go ahead, continue. And he thereby saw, saw that the Satan's act succeeded and therefore had no excuse to put them off completely. He couldn't say, this is nothing, it's a bunch of garbage, so it's made of gold. Somehow it was moving. Somehow it was alive. It was something there. He, could, he, he couldn't say it's nothing. That is on the first thing. Is Rashi quoting a midrash here? Uh, Obviously, it's a, it's a verse from the from the Book of Psalms. Book of Psalms. Yeah. Uh, the form of the, the, the one verse that. The, 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 the ver yeah, in the form of an axe eating grass, not just an axe, an axe eating grass. Obviously, it was something there. W which psalm was this? Psalm, hundred and six, number twenty. Now that I know, I just looked in the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
That's number one. Uh, uh, now we'll skip to the to the bottom of this Rashi. But the Medrash, it's Medrash explanation, Medrash in Vayiko Rabbe, Aaron saw many things. Mr. Martel, you want to read? Aaron saw many things. What he saw? Five, six times uh, from the bottom. Okay, Aaron saw many things. He saw that when his nephew Hur reprimanded them, they killed him. They killed them. And accordingly... One second, who was the son of Miriam? Yeah. Yeah, not the husband of Miriam. They saw okay. who stopped to stop, to stop them. They killed them. Caleb was son, no? Yeah, it was Caleb was her husband. Oh. Caleb was her husband. Who was her son? They killed him. He said that, that he saw that he has to cooperate with them because if not, they'll kill him too. Then what good is going to come out of it? That's number one he saw. We'll skip a few lines to page 513, the first rush in the tab there. He also saw... He also saw the situation and he said... Better the blame be put on me and not on them. Ah, you see who Aaron was? Aaron said, let it be my fault. Aaron took, he said, I will do the gold we have. God will blame me and not the old Jewish people. That's a tzaddik. That's a leader of the Jewish people. He said, what happened? Why Aaron made a golden calf? He knew it's going to be a, it's going to be a night leader. He says, let me, I'll do it. First of all, I can control the situation. Number one, number two, let God blame me. Now, take an interesting thing. A Kohen who worships idols cannot pray, uh, serve in the temple. Aaron, who created the idol, became the high priest. What's going on here? Because he didn't create an idol. He didn't worship it either. He wanted to save the Jewish people. That's what he wanted. He wanted to take the blame. God should blame men and punish him. And actually, we don't have here a book, five books of Moses in Deuteronomy. Moses this, repeats the story, he recalls the story of the golden calf. What is he saying? He says that God wanted to punish Aaron for the, for the golden calf. And I prayed for Aaron. And Moses accomplished a half of the prayer. He saved two sons. God wanted to kill all his four sons. The real reason why not even a view were killed by the... That later was the opportunity, so to speak. But that's what, right here, it happened. That, that Aaron actually paid a price for the golden calf. For taking the blame on himself. But he did it to take the blame on himself. That's, that's a leader. That's a tzaddik. But the section that we just read said, he said, I threw it in the fire and all of a sudden this calf came out. No matter, but <laughs> you're right, but no matter what, I think he did it. Mm -hmm. He might didn't know that it's it going to work out so well, but he said, whatever will be, will be me. Mm -hmm. God can only blame, blame me. I did it. Aaron did that. And it's written, the, the golden calf that Aaron did, that's a language in the Bible. He was trying to delay things in the, just in the very beginning, too. Oh. Then, in, then he said, he saw yet another thing, Rashi says. What else he saw? It's all in the world Aaron saw. The, the Talmud, the Medrash puts in Aaron's, in, in Aaron's ideas, he saw many things. He was as a leader, he said, he saw what's going to be here. He said, better should, I should be blamed. And if I, if I don't cooperate, they'll kill me. And here I can control the situation, maybe I'll save the situation. Go ahead with another explanation that Aaron saw. He saw it. Yet another thing, and he said, if they build the altar themselves, one will bring a chip of wood, and another will bring a stone, resulting in their work being completed all at once. But through my building it and procrastinating in my work, in the meantime, Moshe will come. He tried to buy time. He said, I'll do it. I'll do it. You don't have to do it. It's okay. I'll do it. He was sure that they would. But these guys were so excited that Aaron is trying to win, uh, uh, win time. What is he saying? Aaron announced, tomorrow is the party. Chag Hashem. Tomorrow will be the festival for Hashem, for Hashem, right? Tomorrow. That was the night. Wait until tomorrow. Wait, she will show up. Here, here. Could what you, happened? Couldn't you have done something else besides, you know, create a golden calf? Couldn't you have stalled some other way? But you, you, have, you have a man. 
<laughs> not a map, <laughs> like in, in Tahrir, uh, in Egypt, a hundred thousand people. <gasps> That was, was a good job, what he did, and it was, was a lot. <laughs> that Aaron says, there, what happened, 513, Corey, you want to read? Number six. In top of the page. In top, they, top they of the page. They arose early yes. the next morning and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. The people then sat down to eat and drink. They arose early! <laughs> there you go. They couldn't wait. Huh? Like Mount Sinai. <laughs> when they didn't rise early, <laughs> and Mount Sinai, they were sleeping late. Moses showed up, God showed up at Mount Sinai, and he had to wake up the Jews. It's written um, on page, where is it? Um, page 249. 249. We read and we read and we read and we read and that's page 249. It's actually chapter 19 in the book of, of uh, Exodus, number 16. I continue. It was it was on the third day mm -hmm. in, in the morning mm -hmm. that there was a thunder and lightning. Or there was thunder and lightning. A heavy cloud was on the mountain and there was a very loud sound of the shofar. All the people in the camp trembled. Mm -hmm. Moshe brought the people toward the divine presence. And Rashi says in the morning, yeah. this teacher said, he, he, he came, came first for their, for their sake. He was waiting for them. And the next Rashi says it was like a bride, a groom comes out upright. Moses said, that's why we are up every year on Shavuos to atone for sleeping at Mount at, on the night of Shavuos. Comes to the golden gift, everybody is awake and, uh, and exciting. It's almost, you know, like you have to wake I have a, I deal with that every day. You wake up your kids to school, everybody is tired. Saturday, <laughs> a day of vacation, they're all up and running from six o'clock in the morning, they're all excited. The same thing is here. When you need to go to school to Mount Sinai, <laughs> by the way, Mount Sinai is computer to a school. It's written that the Jews left Mount Sinai. They run away from Mount Sinai like a, a, a kid runs away from school. That's the language that the Talmud is using. <laughs> then, came to school, everybody's tired. Comes to the gold. Party or a party? You said a party, right? A Aaron said, tomorrow is a festival. A festival. Everybody got up early. That's the problem. They got up early in the morning. Yeah. And they and they amused themselves. Amused themselves. Uh, it was a party, but the wrong party. Now we're going to page 514. Moses is at Mount Sinai. He's up in the mountain, in the clouds, in the volcano if you want. And number seven, I mean we're on page five fourteen, number seven. I don't know, I spoke to Moshe. Go down for your people have become corrupt. Those whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt. Okay. God tells Moses, the six o'clock news, you know what's going on downstairs? He says, no. Your people have messed up and became corrupted. The pe you people, you people. Oh, you know, when, when your child doesn't <laughs> behave, your wife tells you, your child is doing this. <laughs> You tell her, it's your child, your child. Always it's my child. The moment he's not behaving, it's your child. Here is the same story. God said that he tells God, tells Moses, your people that didn't behave. Oh, what's, what's this business of your people? But before we go to your people, God tells Moses, go down. Rashi says something amazing. Moses is a representative of God, of the Jewish people. If the Jewish people, if God is not interested in the Jewish people, tells Moses goodbye. Moses on his own does not have the right to be at Mount Sinai. He is here to receive the Torah for the Jews. Your all greatness is that you represent the Jews. If I don't want the Jews, I don't need you. And he told him, go down. It's over. And then he tells them, it's your people. The trash he says here, you people, why it's your people? Wait a second. He just said something, go down, it's over. Go but down means, go down, I'm finished. I don't, I don't oh, need you. you. Oh, I thought it was the opposite. I thought you were saying... Before that's over, if you don't do something. No, no, no. He told them, go down. The, your, your, the people worship titles. They don't deserve a relationship with me. Then the appointment is done. You are here representing, let's say, a whole group of uh, uh, people who want to buy something. 
And then you hear on the news that the group is fell apart. Tell them appointment is over. I mean, you hear he's a representative. I would think he's uh, the agent of the Jewish people. Given how much he's then done. what is he telling him? You people. Rashi says, why it's you people? Rashi says, because this was the Erev Rav, the Rif Rav. When Moses came, to, came, when the Jews came out from Egypt, was a whole group of Egyptians who wanted to join the Jewish people. Medrash Rabbi says, Moses asked God, should I take him, should I accept him, the converts or not? God told him, it's up to you. Moses said, it's good, we'll take him, more people will believe in God. And who left? The elite left, joined the Jewish people. You know who left? The people were the, the, the what it's called? The guys who made the, whenever, Pharaoh, whenever Moses turned the water into blood, Pharaoh's magician turned the water into blood, these magicians, these guys, these professionals, they, they were intelligent people. They were the scholars of Egypt. They, they wanted to join the Jewish people. They thought there is something amazing here. These people, when Moses, Aaron took the gold and threw it into the fire, they, with their magic, made a golden calf. Then God tells Moses, you people, you took them out from Egypt. I didn't, I, I, I wasn't a fan of this idea of bringing the other guys into, into, the, into, the, into the party. I told you take the Jews out of Egypt, not you people. It's you people who took out from Egypt. That's one explanation. Shabbos, God willing, will say another explanation for you people. Why God calls the Jewish people, the people, you people. But that's only for people come on Shabbos. It's a secret. <laughs> what God continues to tell them. I forgot where we're at. We're at number eight. And they departed quickly from the way that I commanded them. And they have made for themselves a molten calf. They have prostrated themselves to it and offered sacrifices to it. And have said, These, Israel, are your gods who brought you up and out of the land of Egypt. In two sentences, God sum him up the all. It's like, give us 20 minutes, I'll give you the world. Give me two minutes, he told them the whole story. They worshiped an idol. It's over. They made it. Then God says to Moses again. Go ahead. Adonai said to Moshe, I have seen, observed these people, and behold, they are still stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked people. There is rednecks. There is stiff-necks. Hmm. The stiff neck people, the Jewish people, st what's a stiff neck? Stubborn people. It doesn't look high, doesn't look bad. Is to be a stiff neck people such a bad thing? Kept us alive, yeah. <laughs> That's stubborn. why we are here. <laughs> if we would not be stubborn, we wouldn't be the Jewish people. We wouldn't be here. I can tell you, my father, he is as stiff neck as you find. <laughs> <laughs> my father in law, not much better. <laughs> Still smokes. <laughs> Nobody can convince him out of it. But this is the people, when Jews were in Russia, Jews were in these places, only this, only these people remained t traditional, uh, remained re loyal to the, to the to religion. The stiff-necked people. Then God, yeah, sometimes it's not always easy. Run a show of stiff-necked people, not an easy thing. <laughs> but if not, it wouldn't be anything. Moses, here God says, because of the stiff-necked people, therefore, what I want to do to them, now leave me alone, and my wrath will blaze against them and destroy them. I will then make you into a great nation. Here God tells, gives him an offer to Moses, an offer he cannot refuse. I'll remove, I'll erase them, and I'll start from your new nation. Will not be. They got the children, the paychecks, not to be Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, be Moses. Actually, Moses being on the phone, because Moses comes from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We will start a new nation. Moses heard in this word, now leave me alone. What does this mean, leave me alone? Don't leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> leave me alone means you can stop me. Don't stop me means you can stop me. Moses says to God, if God wants to kill the Jewish people, he needs to, he needs to tell even Moses what he's going to do. He needs to ask permission, now leave me alone. Moses from this learned that he can stop him. And Moses said already, he learned also what happened with Noah and with Abraham. God told Noah he's destroying the world. Noah said like a good boy. Noah is the oldest child who doesn't know how to say no to his, to his parents. He listens. He did whatever he told him. What happened? Destroyed the world. They learned that it was a bad idea not to say anything. 
came Abraham and God told him, you're going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. What was Abraham's reaction? He started to tell God, God, it's not fair. Try to be a lawyer, right? To negotiate a deal with God. How about that's not justice? The, the, the God, God of the world will not do justice. Fine, if you, you kill the righteous with the wicked. God says, no problem, righteous. I will not kill. You couldn't find even ten righteous, right? Abraham lost the argument. Left. <laughs> okay, Moses. Moses says, God, leave me alone. Ah. Moses didn't have arguments with God. He, had much, he did much better. Basically, he gave God an ultimatum. But let's start to read what... This is actually... The closet. <laughs> That's still going. Um, Can I just say one real question yeah, about the ahead. verse here? On page 514, where it says, These Yisrael are your gods who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Who's saying, that, who's saying those words? These Yisrael... The people the, the, who worship the idol. God is repeating the, what the Jews say about, about the idol. Oh, it's God speaking. Yeah. Okay. Vaychal Moshe. Vaychal means the beginning of when Moses, when Moses uh, started to pray to God. We read, we read it every, every, by every first day we start from him. Number 11. Go ahead. Moshe implored before the presence of Adonai, his God. And he said, Adonai, why should your wrath blaze against your people, your people? Uh, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with the mighty hand. Now Moses tells God, it's you people. Now what is he telling him? Why should you who should be angry? Oh, now comes with the best argument that Moses can do, come up. Number 12. You want Why? to read? Go ahead. Why should Egypt be able to say he brought them out with an evil intent, to kill them in the mountains and to annihilate them from the face of the earth? Turn from, withdraw your blazing wrath, and reconsider the intent of doing evil to your people. Moses said an amazing thing. Moses said, what are the Egyptians going to say? He says, when I came to Pharaoh and I told him, let me go, let, let the people go, Pharaoh says, Reu, I see evil against you in the desert. And Rashi says it there, I see evil against you, I see that you're going to die in the desert, I see blood on you in the desert. I'm a nostalgist, uh, Pharaoh told them, and I see it's blood. Moses told them, don't tell us what to do, let us go. Now, what is the Pharaoh going to say? Pharaoh survived the, 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 the splitting of the sea, right? Pharaoh is alive. Pharaoh is going to say, ha ha, I told you guys don't go. I told you, Moses, ten times I told you not to go. What are, what is, what are, they, what are they going, going to say? You now there is a story about a Jew that is, uh, I think I mentioned the story a few times. His land, the landowner of the city was like the mayor, the sheriff, invited himself to a, se to a Pesach Seder. Here, yeah, that's good food, that's good stuff. So he enjoys the whole Seder, the matzah balls and all the good stuff, and the more, the haray says, everything is good. Then comes to the end of the Seder. He just stands up and he's announcing, next year in Jerusalem. He tells him, Moshka, are you leaving? And he tells him, no, I'm not leaving. Yeah, but God, God will send Moshiach and will take us and we'll, we'll go to Israel. He said, before you leave, give me 30 days notice in advance and I will I'll participate in your journey. I love you, I'll help you, fine. Next year comes, he comes again to the Seder. Comes the end of the Seder. Next year in Jerusalem. He says, Moshka, you said last year you're going to leave. <laughs> said, last year I didn't walk out. This year we are really going. The next year it's coming to the Seder again. It's coming to the end of the Seder. Moshka thinks to himself, what are you going to say now? <laughs> he turns to God and says, the Jew turns to God and says, God, we will forgive you for the Shande, for the, for the poets. What is he going to say? That's what Moses is saying. Again. Moses says, what is the world going to say? What do you think when the Holocaust took place? What did the world say? Where is God? The Jewish people are the chosen people. Where is God? That's what Moses used. That was the argument that Moses used here. And he used the same argument at the story with the spies. In Parashat Shlach, in the book of, of uh, Numbers, and came the story, the spies came, and God was upset with the Jewish people. He used the same argument. What is the Egypt going to say? And then he continues, number 13, he continues with a prayer that we use every time. Remember Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yisrael, your servants to whom you swore by yourself and said to them, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the heaven 
and all this land of which I have spoken I will give to your descendants and they will inherit it forever. He awoke the merit of the patriarch. The patriarch said, he mentioned Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He says, you promised them that their children will go to the land, to the land of Israel. You give them the land. He said basically to God, if the three patriarchs are not enough to defend your peop my people, I will be enough. You say you start for me a new nation. What will be next time with the kids with it? my children do something wrong? Forgive them. Is it the merit of the patriarchs here, or is it the promise that God made to the patriarchs? Rashi, the, the language, the, the text says the promise that he made them. But Rashi brings out the merit also, points out the merit. You mention them, that's why in every prayer we start, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. The Jewish people, wherever they go, they bring the history with them. Oh, we were the people from the old, every time we bring all the story. We always, wherever we go, is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we learned it from Moses. We learned it right from him. That's why in every prayer we mention Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So that's why we don't mention Moses and David. We just stop with the three. Because because they are really the forefathers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God changed his mind. Hashem reconsidered the intent of doing evil uh, that he said he would do to his people. Moshe he reconsidered the idea. No more. God, God decided not to do it. Moshe. That was a nice conversation with God, but now you have to face reality. Moses is going, taking the tablets with him. He's going downstairs. It's all nice, you know. That was all a nice conversation in philosophy. Moses didn't see it anything. He just heard from God that they are making a golden calf. He didn't see the golden calf. He's still going with the tablet. He's going. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Moshe turned and went down from the mountain. And the two tablets of the testimony, with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, they were tablets written on both sides. The writing was visible from either side. That was an amazing miracle. The writings of the two st of the stones were from both sides. Wherever, no matter how you look at the stone, you you see you see the writing. It was from side to side, and the mem. You know, when you write a mem, it's a full cycle. That the piece of stone in the middle was it's standing in a miracle. But the whole thing was America. It's not such a big... Uh... <laughs> it wasn't such a big deal. Yeah, miracle. compared to the whole thing. <laughs> 518. Yeah. Top of the page. Yeah, number 16. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved upon the tablets. The, ta the, wo the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the work of God. Engraving on the tablets. God engraved the writing on the letters because God wanted that the words of God should be engraved in our souls. That's why it's engraving, not written. When you write in parchment, it's two separate things. Therefore, it could be erased. That's why we need a sofer, a scribe, to come from time to time to, to check it, to fix it. But then something in his grave can never be erased. It could get dust a dusty a little bit. Then we have to clean up the dust. When we meet another Jew, Judaism is engraved on them. Sometimes it's, we have to clean up a little the dust, you know. Once I think somebody came with that film to me, it, it takes out that film and starts to do. <laughs> 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 it's taking off the dust. But we don't have to install in the Jew anything. We don't have to write an M, any Jewish writing. It's there. We know that he has a love to Judaism. It's, un it's only sometimes that the dust is covering up on, on the Jew. But the truth is, it's them. And we have to remember that. Okay. Number 17. Joshua heard the voice of the people rejoicing, and he said to Moshe, there's a sound of battle in the camp. You know where Joshua was? Joshua was wanting, waiting all these 40 days at the, at, the, at the bottom of the mountain, as close he was allowed to get. He wasn't in the camp. He was such a disciple, such a dedicated Chassid, that he stood, he was waiting for his Rebbe all the way, 40 days. And a, a, man accused, a portion of money is to come down for him specially, to survive. He wasn't like Moses, they didn't, didn't drink for 40 days. He, he stayed there. And, and now he's, he meets Moses. He tells Moses there is a, war, a sound of war in the army, in the, in the camp. But Moshe, he, Moshe said... But he, Moshe said, it is not the sound of strength, 
song of victory, nor is it the sound of weakness, a song of defeat. It is the sound of a song that I hear. Whatever it means, I don't understand exactly. He said, it says, I said, I hear a voice that I don't like, a sound that I don't like, that it's not good, not good news coming from them. And he, Moshe, approached the camp. He saw the calf and the dancing. Moshe's anger blazed, and he threw down the tablets that were in his hands and smashed them beneath the mountain. Look what happened. Moses came. He saw the... De what, what, what he saw first? He saw the, the calf. And then what he saw? The dancing. Then he got angry. <laughs> he saw the dancing. Not only there is a calf, there is dancing too. There is a party. Moses was upset. He threw the stones and he broke the tablets. Wow. Now... Mixed, mixed message there. Well, here's the mixed message. I see only one. Why, why, why is mixed? Well, the obvious message is he was upset and he broke the tablets, maybe. But the defense to that is uh, that now the tablets are broken, there's no... Uh, there's no... Uh, no contract. No, no contract to break. Then, then right, that first of all, you know, Moses was just the UPS guy. He delivers two tablets from the God to the Jewish people. What do you mean he break the tablets? Who gave him permission to break the tablets? It's not his. Well, no more than that. Moses didn't know that he was going to get ever another set of tablets. Moses didn't even know that he was, God might punish him for such a bad thing. To break the tablets? You know, if you get angry with somebody, you don't break your china that you have in your hand, you put the china down, then you break his hand. <laughs> you break the china. What is this? Moses takes the most important thing. He was 40 days and 40 nights eating it, he didn't drink. He wasn't on a vacation in Las Vegas. He was there for 40 days and 40 nights to get the, two, the set of tablets. The most important thing is coming in, he's breaking them. Most be that there is a reason for Moses breaking. Not just he got angry. Moses could control his anger and not break the tablets. Even when you get very angry, you don't break the most expensive and the most precious thing you have in the world. Well, <laughs> sometimes Mo Moses was was pretty upset when God told him that your people have gone to the dogs in a manner. But yeah, but he still took the tablets with them, yeah, yeah. and he, he saw it there. By the way, that shows you it's one thing to hear about something; it's another thing to see it. He saw it, he couldn't believe what he seen. He still took with him the tablets. And he still went down to, to, to see it, and when he saw it, he didn't say a word. He broke the tablets. He didn't have to say anything. But why he broke the tablets? Just because he's angry. That's why Rashi says, in a few places, it's a whole discussion, Moses knew that on the tablet it's written, do not worship idols. The second commandment. If he delivers the contract, the ktuba to the bride, we are the bride. God is the husband. The moment the ktuba is there, it's, it's a consummated There is a contract that's written that was a marriage. If it's not there, if it's not there, it's not there. He broke the tablets. In a split second, you see, if, if he delivers the tablets, the Jews deserve annihilation. In a split second, Moses had to make the decision who is he taking? The Jews, which side is he taking? Is on God's side or on the Jewish side? Does he save the tablets or he saves the Jews? Moses said, I heck with the tablets. I want to save the Jews. Will not be tablets, will not be a Torah, will not be a Torah. But I need the Jews. The Rebbe once spoke about it. The end of the Torah is the last few lines in the Bible are, are, are a eulogy of Moses, the greatness of Moses. The last line in the Bible is the great things that Moses did in front of the eyes of the Jewish people. Rashi says, what are the great things? You would think he brought the sea, he brought down the manna, he made the ten plagues. No, he broke the tablets. And Rashi says, that's the biggest thing, and God told him, Yasha Koach, for breaking the tablet. But he didn't know that God is going to give him Yasha Koach. Good, A1. He broke the tablets because it was a discussion. God or the Jews? It was a question. Who comes? Who to give up? And he says, I need the Jews. I'm, and that's what, what God loved so much. But there is another reason when he broke the tablets. When he broke the tablets, you know, you can give a speech of 20 minutes, or then you can do something drastic that you don't have to say anything. 
There is not written Moses to go and gather those Jewish people told them, you guys did such a bad thing. Nothing. He broke the tablets. No words needed. The, the Medrash says, the Rebbe once said that, when he broke the tablet, he broke something into the heart of, in the heart of every Jew. There is a Hasidic saying, there is not more complete thing than a broken heart. So what means a broken heart? doesn't mean somebody, it means a little bit of humbleness. We don't mean, God forbid, I mean, I mean a little bit of humbleness, that's what Moses did to the Jewish people by breaking the tablets. This broken tablet, you know, it's written later in the Bible that they used to go out with the Ark of the Covenant when they used to go to wars. According to some commentaries, in this Ark was the broken tablets only. Then why are you taking to the war? You're taking the broken tablets to remind you the golden calf. What is this? But the broken tablets remind the Jews and broke the heart and they did shuva. Then Moses didn't have to say a word. Somebody once told me, even shoulder, she told her son, why, why don't put on the tablets? It was a bar mitzvah boy, he was 14 years old, rebellious age. He says, I'm not orthodox anymore. She started to cry. He said, okay, 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 I'll put on the tablets. If she would argue with him for two hours, nothing would help. Instead of arguing, she started to cry his mother. That worked better than everything. <laughs> Moses, instead of giving lectures, he broke the tablets. No words needed. So this was kind of the first Jack Nicholson line, yeah, you can't handle the truth? <laughs> I, I really had nothing. So <laughs> yeah, he just do done it in symbolic <laughs> form, right? He, exactly. And then what he did the next thing is... Go ahead. He took the calf that they had made and burned it in the fire and then ground it into fine powder. He then scattered it on the water and made the made Israel drink it. What's, what's the significance of that? I mean, it's internalizing it, ingesting it? No, it was a way of, Rashi says it, and, and made Bnei Israel drink it. Rashi says it's like, like a sota, like somebody, there is in Jewish law, if a woman who is, who is a, who her husband accuses her for having an affair, and she says it's not true, and she wants to prove that it's not true, that in biblical time used to be that she can drink water, and if the, if she, if the water don't uh, affect her, that was a proof that it's not true, and that she still continue to live with her husband. It was a way to help the woman to prove that, she, that, that it's an accusation, that's a false accusation. It, the Jewish people going to worshiping idols is like a woman who is having an affair. God is her husband, and the Jewish people went to another God. All over the Bible, it's compared to this. Then he treated them like you treat a sota, like you treat like you treat a woman who is accused of worship of of an, of an affair. The one who never who didn't worship idols, nothing happened to them. The one who worshipped idols, they died. So that's why if he that's why he him, used it. So if he would have given Moses to drink to someone who really then, then nothing would happen to him. Only those uh, the three thousand people. Huh? The three Only these three thousand people altogether was a three thousand people thing. Think about it. The old Jewish people were two million people, at least. 600,000 Jews, right, from the age of 20 to 60. Then there is the one who are younger than 20. The one that were above 60. Women. That's two million people. 3,000 people from two million. You're good in numbers. What is it? Like 0.05%? No. It's probably point, point point zero, No. Point <laughs> oh, good. You're good in math. 3,000 from 2 million. What is it? Next to nothing. <laughs> you're talking about 2,000 times 1.5 is equals 3. Dr. All, so all it's less less you have to tell But it's less. It's, it could be uh, 0.15% or something. Point, point nothing. Nothing. <laughs> point nothing. Then what, what, what I, why everybody gets woke up about the story? So 3,000 people watch the Golden Cave. You, for this, you break the tablets. What is this? But everybody else was sitting on the sidelines. Let's see what will happen. Let's see who wins. Eh, why should I interfere? You know, many times people say, oh, it's not my, it was, I didn't feel, I felt it wasn't my place to say anything. You know what? Better you have your place and say, if you see something wrong is happening, stand up and say it. Don't be so, I, so nice and so cute. Somebody goes around with a, with a stain on his nose. Nobody wants to tell him anything. Point what? Zero zero one five. He was right. Zero zero one five. No, no, not point zero. 
point zero zero one five. Right. That's yeah. what he said. Point zero zero one five. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you're good to know really that. You can see. You can send. No, no, I will. That's. Point that's. Zero. I hope. I hope your uh, your commission is bigger than this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the two notes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Then, okay, let's see what Moses did. Oh, now Moses speaks to Aaron. Right? Moshe said to Aaron, what did these people do to you that you brought upon them such a great sin? Aaron said, let not the wrath of my masters blaze. You know that the people are set on evil. They said to me, make gods for us that will lead us for this Moshe, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt. We do not know what happened to him. Okay. Moses says to Aaron, what did people do to you? Moses blamed Aaron. After all, Moses said, so to speak, why you didn't stop it? That's what Moses told to Aaron. You see, Moses was, in Judaism, Moses was the strict one. Aaron was the soft one. Moses was Beit Shammai. Beit Shammai was known to be the more uh, strict one, the more rigid the more, the, the, every time they go on the more, on the, on the more uh, stricter side. Beatty, they'll go on the more lenient side. Moses was a strong leader. Aaron was the mother. Moses was the father. Moses says, oh, what, 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 Aaron couldn't, he didn't have in him this type of thing to put everybody in the place. See, Moses showed up. Nobody said in there, there was nothing. The whole thing was built and that Moses died. Then Moses showed up, everything, everything this, the whole thing disappeared. You see, here is an example of the building up something of nothing that has only ear, that has nothing. A whole nation with a golden calf who speaks and moves and, who moves and lives as a life. And everybody, then Moses shows up, it's like bringing a candle in a dark room. The moment you light the candle, the old darkness disappears. You don't have to do, you know, you don't chase away darkness with sticks. You just show up. You show up, everything will be good. The old class is, uh, is upside down, they're jumping at the chairs and the tables. The teacher has opened the door. He doesn't have to do anything. It's just there. Everything will, everything will be organized. Everything will be in place. And that's also a lesson to us, how we to spread Judaism. Then what is he telling them? These people, they were bad. They, they asked for Moses, they asked for a God. And, and, that Mo, and Aaron continues the story. I said to them, on top of page 520, number 24, chapter 32, number 24. I said to them, who has gold? They removed their gold and gave it to me. I threw it into the fire, and this calf emerged. Here he says, he threw it in the fire, and this calf emerged. That's what Aaron says. Mm -hmm. Moshe saw the bad traits of the people, for they were now exposed. For Aaron had allowed them to be exposed. And now they would be disgraced among their adversaries. So they again blame Aaron. Aaron allowed them to be uh, exposed. Hmm. Then what Moses did, number 26, continue. Moshe stood at the entrance of the camp and said, Whoever is for Adonai, come to me. All the sons of Levi gathered around him. Mila Hashem Eliah became a very famous slogan. Who is for, whoever is for God, come to me. In Hebrew, it's much more powerful. Mila Hashem Eli says, who, is, who is still stays for God? Who, who, who stayed loyal? Who is here the loyal people? The tribe of the Levites. They were loyal for, more, loyal for God in Egypt. They were the only one who made the priests in Egypt. They were loyal in the desert. They were the, always the, the people of, they were from the tribe of Moses. They stick with Moses no matter what. They were his tribe. Right? They were his tribe, exactly. He said to them, he said to them, This is what Adonai, God of Israel, has said. Let each man put his sword on his hip and pass through from gate to gate in the camp. Let each man kill even his brother, each man his friend, each man his relative. The sons of Levi did as Moshe said. On that day, those that fell from among the people numbered approximately 3,000 men. 3,000 men! Big deal. Wait, the whole think about that. Two million Jews. 0 0.0015, right? Nothing. But how did they know who to kill? I mean, I thought the ones that they drank. That some people were by drinking, some people were in other ways. There was few ways out to, all together is 3,000 people. Okay. There was a few ways Ashi speaks about it. It's a good question, yeah. And then Moshe told them at number 29. Moshe said, 
Consecrate yourselves to, uh, today to Adonai, for each man killed even his son and brothers, that he may bestow a blessing upon you today. The next day Moshe said to the people, You have committed a great sin. Now I will go up to Adonai. Perhaps I will gain atonement for your sin. Moshe returned to Adonai and said, I beseech you, this people have committed a great sin and have made a god of gold. Okay, made a god of gold. You know who Moses blames him? Moses blames God for the Jews making a god of gold. Why? He said, when they left Egypt, God told them, Double no, please beg, I beg Moses, tell the Jews to collect gold and silver from, the, from, from, from Egypt. Moses didn't want, Moses said, the Jews have too much money, it's bad. God says, I want them to be rich. I want them to have money. Now Moses says to God, that's your fault, he gave them gold. He surprised they made a golden calf. He wouldn't give them gold, they wouldn't have a golden calf. <coughs> that's number one. There's another argument that Moses uses in another place. You know, the old Ten Commandment, what language God used in the Ten Commandment? Hebrew. Yeah, but what, how he said it, there is plural and singular. When he spoke, he, how he spoke to the Jewish people? Singular. Singular, he says, Anochi Hashem Elokecha. Plural would be Elokechem. Here he says, I am your God, he means to individual. That Moses told to God, you spoke to me, right? And we had a conversation. God spoke to Moses, I am your God, to get out of me, Jeff, don't know. They overheard the conversation. What do you want from them? You didn't give the Ten Commandments to them. You gave me the Ten Commandments. They were there. That was the whole event of Mount Sinai was a proof that Moses is the, is, the, is the real person who speaks in the name of God. That one time, it's like was a, usually God has a private conversation with Moses. One time he led the Jews in to listen into the conversation. He put them on the, on the speakerphone. He put, he put the, Moses put God on the speaker phone that everybody could hear. See, God speaks to me. It's like a, it's a conference, you put you on the conference call. To. Fine. But what do you want from them? You had a conversation with me. You said, I am your God. There is no sets of tablets. You never told them not to worship idols. You give them the gold. What do you want? <laughs> it's very good. I was just thinking that. But <laughs> here comes, yeah, really. but here comes the best. <laughs> Yet to be coming now. Before Number get, wait, 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 before I get to the best, yes. it just seemed like he was in the camp and then he's on the mountain. Time. Now he's going back how, to God. How did, I mean, it seems like boom and boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He left right away. He messed up the camp. He, he straightened things out. He, he destroyed the, 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 the golden calf. He broke the tablet. He accomplished a lot in a few hours. Now he could just go right back up to God. He God went was back. Like, he did, not he, a problem. God was that, like, that was, okay. that, was, that was Moses. Moses was he had an open line with God. Like open line Friday, you have it every day. <laughs> Here he tells God the ultimate. You want to read Mr. Martin? I want to read the ultimate from God? From Moses? Number 32. Now, if you would he bear, forgive their sin, and if not, blot me out from your book. Aha! That you have written. That is the ultimate, the, the ultimatum. If you forgive the Jews, fine. If not, forget about it. Moses says, erase him from the book. He doesn't want to reform anything. He didn't do like Noah who did nothing. He didn't do like Abraham who had an argument with kind of conversation, a civil conversation sitting by a round table and he's on this call. Who discuss the issue? He gave God an ultimatum. You might be right 150%. If you'd kill the Jews, don't count on me. That's what God wanted to hear from the leader of the Jewish people. He gave he and his life. Not, when he break the tab, broke the tablets, he already risked his life. Because God can kill him for this. I mean, who are you to break the tablets? Here he tells God, be my guest. If the Jews are gone, he doesn't want to be around. He raised me from your book, from the old Torah. I don't want to be a part of this deal. If you kill the Jews. Look, the last trash on page 523, in the bottom of the page, from your book, from the entire Torah. Actually, last week we read Parshish Tetzar. Look, at, by 524, the Rashi continues. Interesting Rashi. So? So that it should not be said of me that I was not worthy enough to ask for mercy on their behalf. Then, basically, last week, you know, we read Parshish Tetzar. 
There is the only parsha from the beginning of Exodus until the end of Deuteronomy, until the end of the Torah, that Moses' name is not mentioned. One parsha. Then commentaries explain that Moses' prayer had an effect for one parsha. Even just for a if, even in a condition, it had an effect on one parsha. That in this parsha, and this parsha, parsha Setzave, we always read it on the week of Moses' Yotzite, the seventh of Adam. That in this week, Moses' name is not, doesn't appear. But Moses gave God the ultimate ultimatum. But not for himself. It wasn't about them. It was about the Jewish people. That's our Rebbe. He, and that's, what he, 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 that's how he saved the Jewish people. And as long as the Jews were, fight, were making a golden calf, idol worshipping, as long as they had the Rebbe, he saved them. What happened in the story of the spies? Moses also tried to save everybody. But he couldn't save the ten spies who, who denied Moses. What they said? Well, we don't want to do what Moses, Moses says a bad idea. We don't want to. They didn't, they didn't believe in Moses, so to speak, that Moses couldn't help him. And that's when you have a, a defender of the Jews, a tzaddik, who can defend the Jews. But the moment you say, oh, I don't need you, I'm smarter than you. If you're smarter, then I cannot help you. That's really, that's line, this line is the line of the Torah. The ultimatum that Moses gave to, the, to God, and he saved the Jewish people. Number 33. Um, Adonai said to Moshe, those who have sinned against me, I will blot out from my book. I'll, I'll only punish the people who sinned against me, not everybody. And, and now go lead the people to the place of which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel will go before you. However, on the day when I take account of them, I will take their sin into account. And then I then struck then the Then what he says here like this, every time when the Jewish people ever suffering, suffer from something, there is a little bit of the golden calf down. Just a little. God spread it out. It's like a mortgage. Every time you pay a little bit. Every time. But there was a plague, and the it, people, go ahead. Oh, I'll just finish it. I know. The plague uh, struck the people because they had made it worship the calf that Aaron made. That Aaron made! Again is in his name! You see? That Aaron made. Now it starts a whole story. Moses prays to God. And God, I just want to tell you one more interesting thing. Moses prays pray to God, and God tells him, I'll forgive the Jewish people. And uh, on page, turn the page. Look what Moses is using for an argument to save the Jewish people. Number three, you want to read on top of the page? Chapter, ter, uh, um, oh, yeah. chapter 33, number three. You will then enter a land flowing with milk and honey. I am sending an angel, for I will not go up among you. For you are a stiff-necked people, and I may destroy you along the way. Here God is using the argument because the stiffnik people is better, he shouldn't be there and shouldn't destroy them. The same argument that he wants to kill them, the same argument is used just the opposite. See, the same argument can be used, it's a matter how you put it. Then Moses says, and then, uh, tell the Jewish people, they are stiffnik people, therefore better, I, I cannot be among you. And then Moses is speaking to God and it's going on a whole discussion and, he, and uh, a whole thing. And later, 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 Moses on page 535, Moses tells God, Moses said it's a good moment with God. God is forgiving and nice and merciful. And chapter 33, number 17, number 18, he Moshe said, he Moshe said, please grant me a vision of your glory. Grant me a vision of your glory. What well, God answer them? Next page. He, God said, I will cause all my goodness to pass before your presence and will proclaim the name Adonai in your presence. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will be compassionate to whom I will be compassionate. And he said, you cannot see my presence for no man can see my presence and live. You cannot see my presence, right? When God showed Moses his present? At a burning bush. What Moses, what Moses did when he saw God's present? 
looked away. Oh, no, no, he didn't look away. He turned away. And then he what Moses did? Frustrated. Himself. What Moses mm -hmm. did? God, he, he saw the first time he saw God's presence. What happened to him? He didn't. He didn't see it. No, no, no. Let's see. Um, right in the beginning, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He saw yeah. that the bush wasn't consumed. Yeah, 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 yeah. What <laughs> Moses did? On page 22, right in the beginning. Page 23, actually. I'm sorry. Moses said, Moses did, what Moses did, he saw Hashem, he got said, uh, then said to him, Moshe, I hid his face, right? For he was afraid to look on God, on Elohim, right? Here, Moses is asking, he wants to see God, God said, you cannot see it. Comes the town and says an amazing line. God tells Moses, Kshiratsiti, lo ratsita. And I wanted to show you myself. You didn't want to. You covered up, right? Now when you want, I don't want. What is this lesson? Sometimes we have opportunities. and we don't use it, we mess up. The Rebbe spoke once about having children. The Rebbe said, we cannot decide when we're going to have children. We can only decide when we're not going to have children. Right? We can prevent children. We cannot... Many times people want children, they cannot have it. Many, 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 many. Then you know what God tells you? And I want it. You didn't want to, right? Now when you want, I don't want it. Let me use this story to bring it to, and it's about everything. Then when God gives us an opportunity to do something good, we better jump on it. Walk. <laughs>